Okay, now we're going to crack open the patch and see how it ticks. Um, in the previous video, you saw me using uh, this thing, which is a Planet Waves uh, piezo mic clip that's designed to clip onto the headstock of a, of a guitar and then plug into your tuner. Um, and this is actually exactly what I needed for this uh, particular thing. I got it for like $10 from Musician's Friend, so it was pretty cheap too. Um, so I'm using a condenser mic right now, and this might result in some false, false triggering because it's not acoustically coupled to the thing that I'm whacking um, because uh, it's not a you know, piezo that's mounted directly on it. Um, so bear with me. Uh, but examples of a previous video, this is more nuts and bolts inside of uh, Max. Um, I don't have time to you know, get into the details about how each one of these uh, modules work, but they share a lot in common. And, like You'll notice all these green and black numbers here are all uh, exactly the same in each module, and that's kind of what I want to talk about, and also how they're fed. So. Um, the goal is to do something interesting with the incoming audio beyond, you know, the obvious like using a crossover or doing simple sample triggering, which uh, is actually an important component of this patch and it still does this, but we also need to do something a bit more uh, expressive, which requires some deeper analysis of the audio input. So we do this with uh, Tristan Jehan's uh, analyzer external. And what it does is it listens to the incoming audio and it produces in real time a wealth of useful information like, you know, like hertz and loudness, brightness. Uh, it sends a bang every time it senses a transient. And it even spits out the first uh, three harmonics and their associated amplitudes. So this is a lot of rich information that you, you just get for free without coding any DSP. It, it just comes right up the bottom of this object here. And so with that, the question then becomes, uh, what, what can we do with this information? How can we use it in a musically interesting or expressive way to control uh, parameters in the rest of this patch? So it really becomes a question of scaling the output of Analyzer into things that you can use. So each one of these modules uh, has a set of outputs from analyzer as a modulation source. And that's what the source menu is. So all these things we just talked about from analyzer are here. And then these are what modulate this parameter here. And in the case of a sine wave generator, you have the source is hertz, and it's feeding the frequency. That's pretty straightforward. Frequency, hertz. Um, but here's something that's not so straightforward. You have loudness that's expressed in decibels up to basically zero. Uh, and you want to use this to scale the output of the sign generator. And so what we need to do is scale this like negative 48 to 1 value to 0 to 1. And that's what I was getting at here. Um, all these modules use the same scaling function, and that's what I'm showing you here. So you have this scale object, and it's so easy to use. If we wanted to, if we had an input that was like from 0 to 1, and we wanted to scale it from 0 to 127, you would just enter 0 to 1 and 0 to 127. You don't have to figure out any math how to, how to do that. But the output of scale isn't bounded. It's not bounded to, if, it, if it, the input um, goes beyond the low input or high input, it just you know, scales the way it would linearly th you know, throughout what's already been set up. Um, this is fed into a clip object, which actually does apply the bounds. So it goes from 0 to 127, uh, and it does not pass anywhere below 0 or above 127. And these are two really useful, very simple to understand objects that I find extremely useful for doing things like taking uh, audio information and turning that into MIDI information or anything that you find yourself scaling a lot of performance data when you're when you're dealing with Max and so these are two really handy to you uh, know of objects um, beyond that there's like a just a multiplier on the end that's the base value that just you know you so you can double things or or, or compress things or whatever beyond the actual scaled and clipped value and that's that's sometimes that's sometimes useful um, so here, here are your parameters, frequency, amplitude, and decay, and they're being modulated by, or the source of the, the movement is coming from analyzer. 
Uh, and you can layer any of these any of these things, use them in conjunction, obviously. I mean, there's three sine wave generators. You can use them all at the same time. A couple frequency modulator generators, and these are essentially two sine wave generators clumped together, and they're like banging them together. Uh, a couple sample generators, um, a, a variation on that called sample pool, which uses a collection of samples like in a round robin. It's kind of like a, a, a sp you're building your own like sample playback scripting library, and then a you know humble MIDI generator from from the input. Um, let's just take a look at the FM input and and turn this on. And if I have my striker here, and so this is you know synthesizing in real time based on frequency and amplitude, stuff that comes from this microphone, it's, it's creating that. And so what happens when you, when you start to use the effects, like we can uh, take some uh, input, audio input and put that into the effects and layer that with uh, the FM and maybe add some effects there and the sine wave generator and maybe layer a sample all together. Uh, then Then you start to create. Let me turn all this off. Then you start to create a, a more complex sound that's that in combination with uh, the stuff that's coming in from the microphone, which you know using running through an effect like a pitch shifter or, or uh, different kinds of filters, um, you can really start to create this aggregate effect that is a combination of this, like sample triggering and synthesis and effects processing that really turns any microphone input into a very live you know, uh, otherworldly source. Um, and, but that's what this is. It's like a toolbox that allows you to add your own things. Maybe you'd want to, um, something I haven't done is have uh, frequency to MIDI and have that follow. That would be an obvious thing to do. Or uh, any number of things. You can like continue adding modules to this. There's really, it's very, very open-ended. But the patch itself, can get you started and you can download this from cycling74.com and uh, start poking around and, and adding, add your own stuff to it. I'm kind of curious to see what other people come up with.